Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial where we'll be going for this sort of arty portrait image possibly bordering on a bit like pop art um, but it's basically all you need for this image is some ink splats which would be black ink splats on a white background um, a colourful overlay and obviously an image of someone now these images I'll get from Pixabay but you can use your own or find them from elsewhere. Now, as for the overlays, this one I used the same colourful overlay, but this all came from a Photoshop tutorial which I had on one of my magazines when they supplied all the ink splats and they did also supply a colour overlay. But that colour overlay is this one here, which is much brighter than the one that I'm going to use for this tutorial. But if you can find something online, probably a colour wheel maybe that you could adapt in some way. And this one is one that I made myself, the overlay. So having a quick look at the overlays, this is the one that was supplied by the magazine. As you can see it's very bright and much stronger colours. This is the one that I found online, which is much more muted and gives a sort of watercolour effect. And this one I made myself. I just painted random colours everywhere and then used Gaussian Blur at its highest level. And if I remember correctly, I used two Gaussian Blur filters to get that really blurred effect. So you could do a similar thing or find something online. Now, talking about online, the one I found is the fourth one down on this page, and I'll put a link to this at the bottom of the video description, but that comes from Wallpaper Access. And as for ink splats, if you just put ink splats into Google and do an image search, you will find loads of ink splats. You really need a sort of, like I said, a black ink splat on a white background. If you find a coloured one you could always turn it into black and white and then use it. So basically that is the setup for this. So I'm going to shut this down, uh, leave some of these pictures down and start the tutorial properly. So this is the image that I'm going to use and I got this from Pixabay. And like I said, you can use whatever image you want. It probably will work best if you have a nice, clear and clean background. So it makes it easier to cut the person out. But if even if you haven't, you can you know, use whichever selection tool you are more comfortable with to select the person. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect because it's, it's only going to be a sort of rough image of the person anyway. So you don't have to be that brilliant. So before I do the selection, I need to start a new document. So I'll come up to File and New. And I'm going to make this A4. And I'm going to make the orientation landscape. As by default it is portrait, but I'm going to make this landscape. I'm going to leave it on 300 DPI. And I'm going to leave it with a transparent background. I have tried it with the white background. Now for some reason it didn't quite work with just the white background so I had to put a white layer above it so I might as well start with a transparent background and then add the layer. So I'm going to add a new pixel layer and then I'm going to flood fill that with white. White is already selected so I have my white background. Now, I'm going to use the ink splats that I got from the magazine rather than anything I've downloaded. And it is sort of best to start with a nice big ink splat for your first layer. So I'm just going to right click that and copy it, come back to my new document, and then edit and paste. Now you just have to resize 
every ink splat that you put on. Let me just, well, not so much resize, but resize them if they need it, and position it as you want it. Now I'm going to leave it about there for now. I can always resize it and move it later. Now the one thing I do need to do is change the blend mode from normal to darken. Now this will be the same for all the ink splats, you change the blend mode to darken. So now we've got the basics of this set up, I'm going to go back to the image of the, the lady and make a selection. Now, like I said, you can use whichever selection tool that you are happiest with. But for quickness, I'm just going to use the selection brush tool. Make sure it's on add. I'll increase the size a bit to do the main areas. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect as long as you've got the basics. Let me, so the, about the only area I'm missing is this strand of hair here. Now to get that I'm going to use the refine option. But if I would use the refine option anyway even if I didn't need to get that bit. Mainly because the red overlay will show up areas that you may have missed. And looking at that the only area I have missed is those hairs which is what I'm coming to get now so let me just quickly brush over that area so it's selected most of them and again I don't need to be pixel perfect as long as I've got most of them and then what I'll do is in output I will change from selection and make that a new layer so when I click apply we'll put over here that selection in a new layer and turn off automatically the layer below and this is where we need to change this picture into a black and white image now in the Photoshop tutorial they use a filter called stamp which obviously we don't have access to so I'm going to use threshold now threshold has only got one adjustment whereas the stamp filter if I remember correctly from the video has about three different adjustments so you can be a bit more subtle with the Photoshop filter than you can with the threshold filter that I'm going to use so the effect may not be so brilliant so this will not work on some portrait images um, this case of trial and error so the threshold adjustment is this half black and white circle down here you click on that and come up to threshold and as you can see it will turn this into this black and white image and like I said you've only got the one adjustment where you can move it left and right to get the quality of image that you want um, I'm just going to come slightly to the left I think about there I'm quite happy with that and then I'm going to merge that down and into that layer so then all I've got to do now is right click that layer and go to copy come back to my document here and then edit and paste now then it's just a case of resizing repositioning to get this where you want it and then change the blend mode of this to screen and the screen blend mode of this one and the darken blend mode of the layer below will affect how much of this is visible so it's really just a case of you finding a look that you like the look of if you see uh, I think I'll hide that eye there so we have the image like that so then I'm just going to highlight the splat layer below so anything I paste now will go above that but below the image 
it's just a case of then adding more splats so I right click this one copy and then edit paste so as you can see while it's in normal mode the white areas are visible so hiding what's below it but if I change it to darken all that can be seen if I use the move tool is the black areas so I'm just going to put let me just resize this down a bit remember if you want to keep the proportions the same hold down the control button or command button on the Mac to keep the proportions so I'm happy where that one is so the next one this one here so I'll copy this back to edit paste let's just do a quick resize on that change the blend mode to darken and then it's just a case of finding where I want to put this So every time I've done this on practice it's different because I put them in different places. Um, so it's very difficult to repeat an image I've done before. So I'll do this one, we'll copy it, edit, paste, and I'll do a quick resize. And this time I'm going to rotate it. So you've got this little handle at the top here. And just rotate it round, put it up here somewhere, change the blend mode to darken, something like that, is that the last one, oh no there's one more here I've got, so copy this one, and paste that in, Resize, change blend mode to darken, and then it's just a case of finding where I want to put this. And let's try this about there, I think. Yeah, so we I'm quite happy with that. We've got all the different splats on and the majority of the woman is showing through the background. So now it's a case of adding the colourful overlay. So if you highlight the top layer and select which one should we go for? We'll go for the one which I downloaded off the internet. So I will copy that, come back to our image. And because the top layer is highlighted, it will be pasted above that one. Then I'll come to Edit and Paste. Let me just zoom out so I can see this better. Right, let's do a quick resize. Just make sure it covers up all of the image. Zoom back in again and then change the blend mode of this colourful layer to screen and there you have your sort of watercolour effect again you could rotate it around if you didn't like the colours so let me hide that one and we'll try uh, which one is it? The, that one there this is the, one, the more brighter colourful one I got from the magazine we'll try that one instead so edit and paste again resize it change the blend mode to screen in fact you could choose any of these ones really in that well not but sort of lighten will work screen will work color dodge will give you that sort of weird effect add will work and light and color will work as well but screen is probably the best choice in most cases 
So then you have like if you have you have in much bright colours you could have that effect or more muted colours you can have that effect and if you do your own like I did just for a bit of fun no it's just a case of rotating that one around Put it in position Change the blend mode to screen. So whether you make your own colourful overlay or you find a good one that you want to download, just put it at the top, change the blend mode to screen or one of those others in that area. Um, and then sort of basically that would be the end. Now the only thing is if you have a layer or sort of areas that you don't want there, say for example this bit of hair down here, you highlight the top layer, add a new pixel layer, get your paintbrush, make sure it's set to white and then it's just a case of paint over an area, so you want to get rid of that splat there or any other loose flyaway areas that you don't want, you can just use the white paintbrush to go over it and basically that is it now I will say I have done a written tutorial for this as well I will add the link for that at the bottom of this um, tutorial in the description and there is also another video I made back in early 2019 that is sort of very similar that was using paintbrush uh, effects rather than ink splats but it did use the threshold and, and did it in a slightly different way so I will add a link to that as well so I personally quite prefer the more muted watercolour type effect so I will leave you with that image so thank you for watching and goodbye